Hello oh, guys, welcome to uh, North Phoenix. It's a new river area. And we're gonna take a look at this 2011 Monaco Camelot. A potential buyer on it reached out to me to see if maybe I could take a look at it really fast before they pull the trigger on it. So, you know, the first thing I'm gonna do is get on the roof. But of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is get all the information and write it down. But then I'll join you guys up on the roof. Now, I'm going to give you a sneak peek on the inside just because there's something interesting on this one. For those of you that might remember, and I do try to bring this up, Navistar purchased Monaco RV in like 2009 at the height of the financial crisis. And this is a 2011 Monaco Camelot. And you can see it by the VIN number right here, it does not start with 1RF, which I traditionally tell you is a Roadmaster chassis. But if we look up here, it does say it's a Roadmaster chassis. And sure enough, if we look underneath, the engine is a Cummins diesel. I can't explain to you how important it is not to have a Navstar engine back here. This is pre-death, so 2011. And this is a Cummins ISL. We do want to look for any sort of uh, oil leaks or manifold cracks especially on the exhaust manifold uh, these surge tanks do like to crack and have issues it should be replaced with a metal one over time it's pretty clean and then this has a side discharge radiator some of these monocle radiators did have issues cracking i think they were aluminum so we do want to check and make sure that those aren't having an issue these also had some trailing arm issues on the rear axle we want to check and make sure that that square tube right there isn't bent or rested i've not seen an issue there i don't normally do a lot of chassis inspection but i am trying to share a little bit of information and the chassis is a Roadmaster chassis with the airbags you can see on both sides of the axle there. So this is something of a more rare motorhome in the sense that it's a Navstar Monaco built on a Roadmaster chassis, which is what you're going to want to uh, find because what we don't really want to look for, I'm sorry to say, is a Navstar Monaco built on a Navstar chassis with a Navstar International diesel engine in the back because those are a little bit more problematic. And while this is a Monaco on a Roadmaster chassis in 2011, it still has a very serviceable chassis layout without the dreaded black Monaco multiplex module here on the driver's side compartment. It also means this Monaco doesn't have the more unique and Navstar electronic modules for the chassis area too. You find normally in the dash area and those are hard to procure and get parts for. These also have a very unique steering column that has the ignition switch on the column itself. Looks like we're at 64,000 miles. So while I get all the information on here, I do want to remind you all that this is a Monaco product. We do want to check the roof radius at this molding right here, make sure it hasn't broken loose. Often this molding right here the hardware that secures it down, especially at the roof cap, uh, likes to uh, separate from the sidewall, letting moisture and water and weather in and causing issues. So that's one of the first things I'll check on a monocle before I even get on the roof. And it's most common right where the slide out topper meets because of the tension from the topper itself. And naturally we're gonna check all the slide out seals too. We might as well go ahead and point out a few other few things. These front clearance lights, those are LED lights. They like to start going bad. I always check the wiper blades because nobody uses them here in Arizona. Look for any cracks in the fiberglass. Those are just stress cracks. One of my least favorite features on these is this handle for the generator slide. It's very problematic. Got a big 10KW owning diesel on it. It's only got, wow, 1,096 hours. That's a lot more than I expected. 
Now on something like this, you would want to run the generator quite a bit. The fan belts which are hidden way back there do like to disintegrate over time and you don't know until you run it under a load for a long time and allow the generator to actually get hot. Otherwise you'd have to take the entire thing apart to look at the fan belt. It's also not uncommon for the surge tanks on the coolant systems to crack, usually around the bolt holes up here at the top. One other thing that want to be notable, especially in the desert, is to check the side walls and the dark paint for any sort of checking. It's not easy to see on camera. There's a little bit if you catch the light right there, but otherwise I'm not seeing signs of checking. And it looks like they have upgraded the slide out toppers. We'll see that in a second. Let's go ahead and get on this roof. You guys know that I like to check the ladder and there's quite a bit of checking. I don't know if you guys can see all that checking right in there, the rear cap. So it looks like this has been getting baked in the sun on the back. You can see it on the rear cap too. This is a seamless gel coat fiberglass roof. Seamless because there's no molding in the back or on the front. They body worked the fiberglass rear cap to the roof itself. And we'll go ahead and start this inspection. I've already made a note of the checking on the rear cap here. In fact, that's a pretty big crack at that point. Look down the sidewall for any waviness. Look right here, make sure it's not loose. Go ahead and let you guys see the top of the slide out room here. Our favorite to turn upon. It's still stuck, a little bit wrinkly. These fabrics are in good shape, and I think these have been upgraded, I saw. Looks like it's just using die course lap sealant for the solar panel mounts. They're not loose. And of course, there's no molding I have to check at the rear cap. We'll peer over the side. I'm not seeing any real checking or warping, and this molding's not loose. Top of the slide out, we're looking good too. Seals look adequate looks like we are starting to see some checking and some peeling of the paint here on the roof radius more noticeable right there you can see it flaking off we have one two three acs leaned up against those to make sure they're not loose i'm walking the whole roof to make sure that nothing seems loose the most obvious problem I've already seen, if you guys have already saw, these sewer vents are at the end of their life. You can see that one's cracked and loose. I'm gonna recommend a new, new ones. The sidewall looks pretty good. More peeling paint there. Now on these Monaco roofs, you do wanna kind of walk around all the vents, make sure that the screws don't pop up, but I can see that that sealant is at the end of its life, and that's a weird sealant. We need to reseal those too. Huh. Same thing right here with the skylight. This does not look like the original skylight. Like maybe it's been replaced before. So that's a good sign. No cracking on it. Same issue with the sealant here. I don't know what sealant they use, but. That stuff turned into powder. That's the wrong stuff. Ugh, it's kind of gross. So this second AC has been replaced. This is the new, more modern style of the Mach 8. You can tell by the tiny little uh, fan there because it has a separate motor for the outside blower and the inside, whereas those use the same motor for the inside and the outside blower. And the blower wheels on those were problematic. Try to talk over the pool pump right there. Everything looks pretty good. I'll let you guys look underneath the topper. More peeling paint, but the roof feels very strong. The GPS antenna for the <laughs> obsolete satellite dish is broken. That was a wine guard one. We have a box awning on top right here. Again, I don't know what sealant they use, but this is not the right sealant on the roof. You should not 
fall apart like that. Hmm. It's a little bit alarming. You can see it right here too. I'd say that's the original stuff. But see, this is the original stuff too. And this one feels more like silic. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's interesting. Front AC. Oh, look at that. I've had people ask me why I even lean up, up against these things. They're never loose, but... That's very loose. So I have to look in the ceiling underneath make sure that there's no water leaks. Yeah, so the roof sealant on this is all deteriorating. It's not a very good sign. I don't know if that's a Navstar Monaco issue where they use the wrong sealant. But I find this to be very strange. Oh, so look at that. You know, the molding's loose down there. The body molding, I don't know if you guys can see how loose it is down there. And that's what we'd be looking for at the top here. But it's not loose up here, so that's a good sign. And again, no seam where the front cap meets the roof. I think this was a horrible installation. There's no deck plate right there to keep water from tracking down the cable. So we'll have to look for water damage right there. Another common place for water damage is going to be right above the entry door on a Monaco. So I'll look on the inside for any rot there. It's normally coming from the entry door awning, not being sealed correctly where it meets the front cap. Otherwise, I'll lean you guys over just a little bit. We'll take a look at the windshield gasket. I did warn you about the lights having problems, but also we want to make sure they're not cracked. And there's a little bit of a checking in the front cap here too. So that was it. The, well, I guess that's not so good either. Not seeing any issues. We'll take a look over here. So this is... Tanara sewing thread, huh? I don't know. But it does seem like they're newer. I got lots of things to write down now, but this is why we do a roof inspection before you buy an RV. This really is a beautiful 2011 Monaco Camelot, but we found a number of issues with it. Hopefully it doesn't cause any water damage inside. Luckily, this is the arid Sonoran Desert. So something of a mixed bag up here. We do see signs with this AC and the slide out toppers and the skylight that the previous owner has taken care of the RV, but also the lap sealant should have been inspected and repaired years ago. It's the same with the sewer vents. The paint peeling, that's a very common problem. The checking, that's a very common problem. That satellite coax installation, not happy with that one. It should have had a cable entry plate just like this is on the rear. The lap sealant is what's getting me. Okay, and there's lots to write up on here and I got lots more to inspect. Let me go ahead and uh, finish up the inspection on the inside, take a lot of pictures for the possible new owner, and then I'll take you guys on a quick tour of the inside once I'm all done. It does feel solid, it was built well, just uh, needs a little bit of maintenance on this a gel coat fiberglass seamless roof. All right, so I finished up the inspection on this 2011 Camelot from Monaco. And the first thing I want to remind you guys is this is a private party sale. I don't know anything about the selling price on it. The tires are about seven years old. And the second thing you probably guys want to know is it's a model number 43 PKQ Camelot from Monaco. So we'll go ahead and take a very quick tour of this beautiful coach and I like this floor plan I don't see this one very often it's not really a front kitchen it's more like a mid coach kitchen on the floor below it's gonna be ceramic tile the entire full length of the RV except for the bedroom and then the uh, slide out floors it does have some glass mosaic tile as accents but I think it aged pretty well it's always nice not to have a carpet at the entryway right there and this is just a 
floor mat. The, the passenger seat and the driver's seats are in relatively good condition. There's a little bit of a damage on the cording right there, the upholstery, but otherwise not a lot of damage to it. We did see the dash area already. This has automatic air leveling on it, so it does not have hydraulic jacks. And on the uh, windows, it's all just going to be MCD day and night roller shades, with the exception of the power shades in the front. That'll act as a privacy curtain, too. Somewhat surprisingly, the dash radio is still the original one that came with it from Monaco, but it does have front and side view cameras, and these cameras are integrated into the convex mirrors down there, and they're working pretty well. Now moving further back, yes, it is actually a front kitchen, because the right behind the passenger seat is the galley with the three burner propane stove top underneath the solid surface Corian countertop with the ceramic tile backsplash with the matching mosaic tile, but often... The refrigerator is usually behind the driver's seat or behind the passenger seat, not right there in the middle. So that's kind of unique to, as far as I'm concerned. The dinette booth on the main slide out here, it does extend out. It does not turn into a bed. It's a very standard uh, dinette booth right here. It's important also to note that all the cabinetry in the entire RV, all the trim, Cabinet faces, drawer faces, and cabinet doors are all real solid wood. And it has the original sharp over-the-road TV above the dash right there. But the cabinetry is kind of the star of the show here. Even the ceiling, which I know we wanted to check for any sort of staining or water leakage or delamination. Looks fantastic. Anyways, back to the galley. Sharp convection oven microwave right above. That's the original one, still came with it. The countertop is in great condition. It does have a under countertop mounted double sink. And a lot of times the drains are in bad condition, but these are in great condition. Even though a lot of people aren't a big fan of the darker finishes of these fixtures because they tend to show mineral staining. These are in wonderful condition. Of course, this is just a countertop extension. I had the hardest time finding that GFCI resettable outlet there. And the aqua hot down below is putting out nice heat for me. Now as we head further back, now speaking of the refrigerator, this is a residential Frigidaire gallery edition. I've had a Frigidaire refrigerator since 2007 and I think these are pretty bulletproof refrigerators so I think the new owner is going to be happy with that one especially because it has water and ice in the door which I do love. And then just rear of that will be sofa. Now this is a full-size sofa, but because there's a wraparound sofa right here, I'm more apt to call that a love seat, even though it's not a love seat. This does turn into a bed. These armrests come off, and the cushions will just come out of the way. And it's a true hide a bed that'll just come out the bottom right here. And it has an air mattress topper on it. And this is a king-size bed. The only problem is. With that sofa right there, I can't put the bed down. So I will have to put this pull-out section away. Lift that up and slide that back in. And now we can flip this over. So that could be a little bit annoying, because every night you would have to put the sofa away if you want to make that bed for a guest. But it would be a comfortable king-size bed. It's a very big bed. And this upholstery is in really good condition. It's very comfortable to sit on. The upholstery is quite soft, and this gives you a pretty good view of the main TV right there. Of course, the wraparound sofa will be the more comfortable home theater seating. Now, the good news is this section right here also flips down into a bed. It's a little bit more uncomfortable bed because of the seam right here in the middle, and this is a little bit lower than this side. But as we push past here into the bathroom, this is a mid-coach bathroom. It is split. That means the shower's on one side. The best is solid wood hinge door will be the water closet with a porcelain gravity toilet, its own vanity sink with a matching Corian countertop and matching ceramic tile backsplash and mirrored medicine cabinet above. But even though this has the dreaded curved door on it, this has the updated or upgraded rollers on it. Each roller is mounted with two screws as hardware instead of the central nut. So these doors don't fall apart nearly as easily. This uh, surround is a seamless a fiberglass surround with a 
bench seat or a ledge. I would hard, hardly call it a seat, but it is definitely a ledge you can put your foot up on if you need to. I will risk it all by showing it to you guys again. I'm six foot tall. This is about a seven inch step up into the shower. I didn't have to duck, but I will hit my head on this cross piece right there for the door. But if I just step straight out, I'm fine. We'll go ahead and pan up to see the skylight. I didn't see any signs of water damage here. However, a lot of the ceiling lights back here don't seem to be working. So I'm really pleased with the shower design and even the dark finish on the shower hardware itself has been holding up. I don't really see a lot of damage to it. That'll bring us over to its own vanity with the zone darker finish, a faucet. There's a little bit of uh, wear on the drains down below, but those are just push button drains. Same ceramic tile backsplash and mirrored medicine cabinet above. And again, that's all solid wood construction. This is not paneling. You can see how thick that cabinet face is, even on the lighted balance above. Before we push past the solid wood double pocket doors there, we'll go past here to see that this does have a washer dryer combo from Splendid. It still works, but if you notice the adjustable shelving above, there is more than enough room to put a dryer up there. So you could upgrade this to a washer and dryer combination. Lastly, we'll push past these pocket doors to the bedroom. Now, before I walk back there and point out that the carpet that was originally in here has been upgraded to a, I don't know if you would call it an upgrade, but it has been changed out to a laminate flooring made to look like wood flooring, but this is not real wood down there. For whatever reason, the ceiling fan above the switch is way over here in the laundry center. So that doesn't seem quite a, the nice thing to do from Monaco. It should have been at the bed here somewhere. Now, this bed is a king size bed. It's a huge bed. It is also a sleep number bed, so it's quite adjustable. And if you just bear with me for a minute, the lights in here are not working. I did write that up on the inspection, but there's a beautiful bank of drawers with a matching Corian solid surface countertop with that same built up bulky edge. More drawer space down below, the original sharp LCD TV. I know there was a lot of intrigue going on about 2011 with Monaco and Navstar, but their workers really put together a pretty nice RV. And then lastly is going to be the standard mirror sliding closet doors. And here you'll find the 12 volt fuses for the IntelliTech multiplex system. But that was it guys. Thanks for joining me on this quick tour of this 2011 Camelot from Monaco RV under the Navistar brand name. Now this is just a private party sale. There's no dealer involved in this whatsoever. I was just asked to do a quick inspection of it and I was happy to bring you guys along for it. I don't know what they're asking for it. I don't know anything else about it than what I've shared with you guys. I was quite surprised by how beautiful this Camelot is and I really do enjoy the floor plan here. Overall, this Camelot is in pretty good condition. I found a sizable list of ticky tacky items, but the uh, owner did uh, do a very good job of maintaining this beautiful RV. I do my best to uh, find as much as I can. I try to tell people, you have three inspectors, you're gonna have three different lists, and each uh, list will have something more important than uh, anybody else found on their other list. I know in a lot of my videos, I warn about the Navstar Monaco's, but I think we figured out that as long as we find a Roadmaster chassis with a Cummins turbo diesel powering it there in the back, we should be okay. And it might move up my list of RVs that I could recommend to people. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I got to get to the other side of town now. Bye. Now, normally I wouldn't want to show anybody's personal backyard, but it's just been too wet of a winter here, and the desert's too beautiful, and the saguaros are nice and full. With a Cummins turbo diesel under it, you should be okay. Just uh, with a Cummins turbo diesel, powering it being the with a powerful Cummins turbo diesel in the back powering it, you should 